The final conditional statement we'll look at is the if statement. There are a few elements or items in this family that I need to correct that have to do with the extensions. For example, I need the clearance width to take into account the extension width when the extensions are visible. Therefore, I'm going to select these end clearance width parameters and I'll create a new parameter called clearance width extensions and put this under the constraints group If I now go to my family types, in the clearance width extensions, I can use the following syntax. If make this a bit smaller. If extensions so if the extensions parameter is ticked yes then I want the clearance width extension to be clearance width plus the extension width and if the extensions is not ticked, so if extensions is no or false, I want the clearance width value. So this is effectively saying if the extensions parameter is ticked true, then the extension width or the clearance width at the ends should be the clearance width plus the extension width to take into account the extra dimension here. If not, so if extensions is not ticked, then just use the clearance width. If I click OK and I now load this into my project and click override existing version and I change the type to the extended type, I can see how the clearance width increases to take into account the extension width. And if I select edit type, I can see how the extensions is ticked on and the clearance for the extension width is increased. So that is how to use an if statement to control dimensions and constraints based on another parameter. I could do the same thing for the table area. So I could say if, and this time I could say not extensions close brackets so if extensions is not selected or ticked then it should be the width by the depth but if it is selected then it should be the width plus open brackets two times the extension width multiplied by the depth and I need another brackets at the end to close the statement. So here we have example if extensions is not selected then it should simply be the width by the depth but if extensions 
is ticked, then it should be the the width plus two times the extension width to give the total width all inside one bracket. So it does this first and then multiply that by the depth. Again, for the table volume, I could then just take this and take this to table area times table top thickness. And because this is reading the table area, the area will adjust whenever the extensions are applied or not applied. The final use of the if statement I will use with some text. So I'll create a new parameter for warning text. Create the type of parameter as text and group the parameter under data. So in this example, I could say if check all sizes exceeded. So if that is ticked, comma, it should read both dimensions exceeded in inverted commas or speech quotations. I can have comma. I can then have another nested if statement. So if this is effectively false, then move on to the next statement. So if check max depth exceeded, then read maximum depth exceeded. And then again, if that is not satisfied, if open brackets, check max width exceeded, comma, open brackets, maximum width exceeded. And then finally, if neither of these have been exceeded, I need a result if false. So I need to finish it with a final statement to say size compliant. And again, I need to finish it because there have been three different if statements. I need to complete it with three different brackets to finish the statement. So if I set the width to be 1900, I can see that the maximum width has been exceeded. If I reset, if I set the depth to a thousand, I can see that the maximum depth is exceeded in the text. And if the width and the depth are exceeded, I get the warning text of both dimensions have been exceeded. So that is how you can use nested if statements to check for various conditions and report a value back to the parameter, indicating the outcome for each of the conditions. So hopefully that's given a good few examples of how you can use the if statements and also combined with the additional conditional statements that are available as part of the Revit formula syntax.